Um, I'm Lauren Golombeski. Um, thank you for pronouncing it like the real Polish way, because I, we, my family doesn't even do that. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm a co-founder and designer at a, a, a company called Voxable, and we build conversational interfaces. So interfaces where um, humans are talking to machines or computers and software. Um, so we build chatbots, Alexa skills, um, and conversational interfaces that live inside of web apps and native mobile apps. You can check out our website and feel free to tweet at me, at Lauren Golem. So today I'm going to talk about what uh, chatbots are and what a personal chatbot is more specifically, and um, how those bots can improve our lives, as well as a project that I helped, uh, or bot that I helped design called Ghostbot, and how it attempts to make dating better for women. So what do I mean by bot, chatbots, bots, um, and specifically personal chatbots? So I'm going to start talking about chatbots. Um, chatbots are software that you can talk to via chat. Uh, they might help you get the weather, book plane tickets, um, check your bank balance, or shop. Um, and typically, at least right now, they're an interface into brands or large companies. So the, the people who are most leveraging chatbots are bigger brands. H&M has a shopping bot. So, and all of these platforms, uh, SMS, Slack, Skype, um, Facebook Messenger, Telegram, and Kik, amongst many others, are all uh, delivery platforms for chatbots. And you can kind of think of them as a new type of browser. So they provide us affordances as developers and designers that we can deliver to end users. And interestingly, uh, chatbots, or sorry, messaging channels have now um, surpassed social networks as far as communication. So this is um, some research done by Business um, Insider Intelligence and they're showing the top four messaging channels against the top four social networks. So we can see that it's a way that more and more people are choosing to communicate. And chatbots have emerged to bring software to the interfaces with which most people want to interact. And um, those messaging platforms that I mentioned have all built ecosystems in which bots can thrive. And there are really amazing business and social opportunities to be uncovered as this technology progresses. So now I'm going to talk about personal chatbots um, and how they can serve us personally. Um, one way to think about them is they could be digital avatars of ourselves, um, personas of us that live online and actually communicate on our behalf. But they can also be bots that we hire to do a job for us individually. And they'll serve our unique and individual needs. And that's opposed to ones that serve large brands and companies. They can actually even help us assert ourselves uh, against big companies and brands. So you can imagine a health insurance company likely has um, a lot of automation to their process when they're looking at your claim. But what if I could hire a chatbot or a bot just to help me nav navigate the process of um, trying to argue that claim with that insurance company, the appeal process. And there are great examples of bots that are already doing some of this work for social good. So this is the world's first robot lawyer. Um, it's also been known as the do not pay bot, and it was most famous for helping people get out of parking tickets. So signs that are on the road that aren't actually valid and you get a ticket because the person who's um, writing the tickets has a different understanding of what is legal than what is actually legal. So you can actually go to court and argue tickets that weren't valid for you to receive. And it's actually started to help people navigate more government bureaucracy. And it's actually just right now in the UK and EU. But we can imagine how in the states we could use it across the federal, state, and local levels to do a similar thing. We could help people find government assistance or scholarships and um, all of the resources that are available to them that are really difficult for humans to navigate. So this is a great example for, of social good. Um, 
happening as a result of bots. And an example that you might be more familiar with is Google Inbox, not necessarily being used for social good, but it's an example of how we're using artificial intelligence to mediate our communication. So Google Inbox recommends responses to you um, based on your conversa conversation history with that person. And it doesn't necessarily have to, bots don't necessarily have to live in just an instant chat style messaging channel. Um, and I think that AI mediated communication will continue to expand its reach in our lives as this underlying technology and user experience progresses. And that may be really exciting and it may be really terrifying at the same time. So now I'm going to talk about how bots might improve our lives. Many bots use natural language understanding, which allows users to interact with technology using their own words, really only using speech or text. And these happen to be fantastic interfaces for humans, because by design, they're easier to learn than boxes and buttons, which are all kind of made up affordances. Um, and natural language interfaces are actually anticipating the mental model of the user. Um, and CUI, when it doesn't, when it misses that anticipation of your mental model and it doesn't understand what you're trying to say, it's actually really easy to update and make better. So you don't have to redeploy your code to do that. You can actually update the model and the bot will be better. Um, and designing for natural language forces us to talk with consumers and focus on their goals. Uh, empathy and understanding of users is paramount to making great natural language interfaces. There's also a network effect of machine learning. And machine learning is the underlying technology of artificial intelligence and natural language understanding. So it kind of goes like this. If your bot provides value, people will talk to it more and more, um, which generates data. And that data can be used to make the bot better. And that cycle continues and continues. It's kind of built in automatic iteration. And not necessarily so automatic these days. You still have to have some human involvement do that and make judgments about that data, um, which is good because we're teaching computers how to understand what we all understand. And this happens throughout the entire technology stack of um, conversational interfaces, it, the entire technology stack of conversational interfaces. From automatic speech recognition, which is used in voice interfaces, to natural lang language understanding, which is used in both voice and text interfaces, to text-to-speech, which is, again, voice interfaces. Um, and so it's really exciting to employ technology that is constantly improving and improving at such a rapid pace. So I think there are so many experiences and processes that can be made better through bots and automation. I think mediating our communication is one example. And really our industry hasn't tapped into a large majority of, of these uh, opportunities. I think chatbots will foster better communication um, more connectivity and intimacy with humans and machines. So for example, I could use a translation bot if I needed to communicate with someone who didn't speak my language. And as we learned earlier, maybe that automatic translation isn't the best, but it still provides me an opportunity to talk with people I wouldn't be able to otherwise. And that technology continues to get better. So the more that I use it, the more that that underlying translation bot can improve its data and its output. And that's Google Translate has been around for a really long time and it gets better and better. It used to be really funny when you went to the website and was like, how does it translate this language? Um, and you're like, it's not even close. And today it's like, wow, it's a lot closer than it was before. And that's because people continue to use it and provide that data and um, really make that network effect continue. Um, it also, this technology can be used to make human-to-machine communication better, which I think means the technology can better serve us. So in the future, I envision an ecosystem of, of bots that are designed to serve individual needs as humans. And I think there's a catch, though. Like, we need 
good design to assure that future. So designers and developers need to go and talk to communities and explore uh, their problems. And they can also look at their own personal struggles and find ways that they can, use be they can best use this new technology to solve them. And hopefully we'll be able to influence the path that this technology takes. Um, and not only is there like a lot of business opportunity if we're solving problems for people, but there is a great opportunity to improve society. And in order to get there, we need to focus on establishing better usability and accessibility standards as this industry matures and take a deeper look at the impact that this technology is making in the world. We need to discuss this early and often so that we can be aware of the downsides and be able to change course. So this kind of plays on the exciting versus terrifying. We need to make sure that this technology isn't terrifying. And in order to have these conversations, we need diverse groups of designers. We talked about the value of diversity in teams, and um, it's really important in new technology that's emerging. The designers, engineers, data scientists, and leaders who all contribute to bots and the underlying technology um, should be diverse because that ensures better ideas, better perspectives, perspectives, and increases the likelihood of solving problems for a greater number of people. If you're able to serve a larger portion of your market, you're also able to make more money um, and support yourselves and support more people in the world. And I think as marginalized folks, we have a unique opportunity to take a hold of this new technology. Very little has been established. Um, there are less internal structures fighting us. I mean, honestly, it's a new frontier, so we could all be pioneers in it, um, which is really exciting for me. So now I'm gonna discuss a chatbot my company, Voxel, designed um, with our client, Burner. I'm gonna talk about how it tries to make dating better for women. And I'm focusing on women for a couple reasons, one of which is our research brought us there. And um, also, we have a bias. <laughs> in our design team, I was the woman and um, in dating, and we, uh, our bias of our team definitely uh, affected the direction that it took. So Ghostbot is a text messaging bot that helps you offload texting with dates that you're no longer interested in, especially <laughs> aggressive ones. <laughs> so when a date texts you and you've turned on Ghostbot, the bot will automatically respond based on the type of message that it receives. And it's built for the Burner platform. So Burner is a mobile app and it gives you disposable phone numbers. And their mission is to make phone numbers programmable. Their connection, they have a connections platform that's built into their app, which allows you to connect your phone number to other services. Uh, and one of these services is you can connect it to SoundCloud, so your voicemails all get forwarded to SoundCloud. So you have saved voicemails somewhere else in the cloud. Um, and you can also forward your, uh, the images that get texted to you to Dropbox. And their platform is a great opportunity to build personal bots that run on SMS because they're uniquely personal um, delivery systems. It's a phone number that is disposable, that is mine, um, and I can use it to do all kinds of cool things. So originally, uh, the idea for Ghostbot was, uh, came from an internal hackathon that Burner held where one of their designers wrote a script that envisioned a ghosting bot. Um, and the idea was much bigger <laughs> um, in its envision, uh, in its vision than what was technically feasible. But we took that idea and we dove into researching um, it and researching why people use Burner and um, why ghosting might be an interesting thing that they would do with their Burner number. And we actually saw that a lot of women use it for privacy while dating online especially. And I guess I should clarify, mostly females who are dating men. Um, and that's not to say that we didn't find other types of aggression for other communities, but we saw a large amount of documentation of the aggression um, happening um, towards women on these communities like By Felipe 
and Tinder nightmares amongst others. So these are Instagram accounts that you can check out, but fair warning that they're really aggressive and vulgar um, at times. Um, and we started to, and that's what we found at when we did our research was like an astounding amount of aggression and abusive and violent language directed towards women. And it was really staggering and um, we started to talk to more women um, who personally who were dating online and what we realized is that it seemed to have happened to almost all of them, this aggressive speech. Um, myself included, like I remembered back to when I was dating online and definitely had accounts of just unwarranted aggression thrown at me um, really and, and often and what you'll see if you visit any of those communities is that um, often it's a no-win situation. So it's, you're not even provoking, um, you may be trying to be, one may be trying to be diplomatic uh, and in their responses and still get <laughs> aggression for really no reason. Um, and it didn't seem to be something that was widely discussed in the open. It seemed to get lumped into the general awfulness that is dating online. And I think the thing to take away is that these situations are not unique, um, but they do impose a heavy emotional burden. Um, we, and we wanted to relieve some of that emotional burden through GhostBot. So we actually built our natural language understanding model to respond to the aggression we saw on these communities. So we used By Felipe and Tinder Nightmares to actually train the model and categorize the types of messages, the types of aggression that was being directed at women. Um, we collaborated with a screenwriter, Peter Miriani, who trained that natural language understanding model to find and categorize those, those various types of messages that we were seeing. And some of the categories that we created were nagging, mansplaining, um, insults, bragging, <laughs> booty calls, amongst many others that were a little bit less <laughs> aggressive and just kind of normal speech. And, and we also um, categorized certain um, types of messages that were really violent and really abusive and those messages weren't responded to. They, uh, the users were blocked and GhostBot would stop interacting with those users. Um, we were definitely aware of not wanting to escalate any of the situations or make it worse. So like I said, when a date texts you and GhostBot is on, they will receive, they will receive a message based on um, the type of message they send to you. And this is an actual conversation that uh, you could have with GhostBot. And while we, design, while we were designing the natural language understanding, uh, we built an open source tool for expanding the grammar or the demo, domain of knowledge that the bot knows. So it, this, it's called Expando, and it helps designers encode synonyms and variations of uh, syntax really easily. And, um, and I think a big design advantage that it has is that it allows us to collaborate on that model. So a lot of the natural language understanding platforms out there don't have any sense of collaboration. And um, we wanted to be able to basically economize that work and have more people be able to get their voice into the model at once. And I think that's a really important aspect of um, natural language interfaces is that more diverse voices and ways of speaking helps make all of, helps make the interface smarter. And you can check it out on GitHub if you're interested in diving into building NLU models. Um, and you could, um, it, we built it to work with API.ai, which is um, now acquired by Google, but it's a really fantastic natural language understanding tool um, that is really, uh, well designed and um, definitely available to people who aren't necessarily um, tech or developers or programmers. So um, when we released GhostBot, the response we got was amazing and it was picked up by over 100 media outlets. Some of that is contributed to the fact that I think sex sells, so anything talking about dating and the phenomenon, phenomenon that is ghosting is definitely really interesting. <clears throat> but the 
um, the response we got from women was astounding. Like they were, they responded really well to it and were really happy that we were talking about the issue. Even those women who wouldn't necessarily use um, ghosting or ghost pot to handle that type of situation, they were happy that we were talking about the issue. Um, but there definitely was criticism, and by and large, that criticism came from a few men who thought it was disrespectful or immature to handle um, that type of situation with ghosting. And we get it. We had that. Um, we were we ha we anticipated that going into the project, um, but after we did our research and we found that astounding amount of aggression. Um, we thought that it was more important to focus on the harassment and not the response to the harassment. And it really affirmed that we are collectively not all aware of that aggression. And all, you know, by and large, a lot of the aggression that happens that isn't discussed. So we were happy when Teen Vogue um, pointed out some of these sobering statistics in their coverage of GhostBot. Um, around one in four women between ages 18 and 24 has experienced online sexual harassment and 26% have been stalked online. And pointing out that this um, is a serious emotional tool. So today I talked about what chatbots are and what opportunities we have for personal chatbots and how those bots can help us as individuals as well as how GhostBot is addressing broken dating culture. Again, I'm at Lauren Golem and you can check out um, boxable.io. Thank you.